What's up, y'all? This is DJ Kenny Parker, DJ and producer for Boogie Down Productions slash KRS-One, and today I'm back with another video. Now, today's story revolves around a beef that BDP and KRS-One had in the year of 1992. Now, for those of you guys that are regulars on this channel, you've heard me mention quite a few times that 1992 was a very turbulent year for BDP. And there were a lot of little beefs and conflicts that arose during that year. I've spoken on a few of them, like the X-Clan beef. There's a whole video pertaining to that that I did on this channel. You can check it out. I also mentioned that BDP had a little conflict with the artist Ice Cube at the time. There was beef with the group out of New Jersey called Poor Righteous Teachers. And, as you guys know, the infamous beef with PM Dawn. I did a whole Karis one PM Dawn beef breakdown on this channel about a year ago. You guys should check it out. That's just a few of the beefs that BDP had that year. During the course of the next few weeks and months, I'll get into some of the other beefs that BDP had just in 1992. Anyway... Sometime around April, May-ish of 1992, BDP had a big show in New York City. There were a bunch of groups on the bill. I don't remember all of the groups on the bill, but I do remember that Das FX was on the bill. I do believe the Fushnikens were on the bill and a group out of Staten Island called the UMCs. The UMCs had two members of the group. Haas G and Cool Kim, and they're best known for the hit, Blue Cheese. Now on this particular show, BDP was scheduled to go last. So all the other groups went first, and a couple of the groups did freestyles during their show, which was dope. Now when it was time for us to perform, during our set, we also have a little freestyle section in the middle of the show. Usually, I'm rocking an SP-1200 drum machine just like this, and KRS-One will be rocking some rhymes to the crowd. Right when KRS-One was about to do his freestyle, he did like a little introduction. Now, in KRS-One true bravado, this is what he said. A lot of MCs come on the stage and claim that they can freestyle, but a lot of you MCs can't freestyle. I'm going to show you all how to freestyle. And when he said that, I heard the crowd go, ooh, like that. And I was like, why are they going, ooh, he didn't really say nothing that serious. That's what I thought at the time. Anyway, we did the freestyle section of the show. It rocked. Actually, the whole show was off the hook. Here's a little footage of that actual show. As you can see, the crowd was going crazy. Right after the show, Chris's last words were, peace, y'all, get home safe. And the crowd started to file out, and we started to leave the stage and come down off a little exit uh, staircase that they had right at the side of the stage. When we came down off the side of the stage, who was waiting for us right there? The UMCs. And Cool Kim comes up to Karis One and goes, yo, Everybody in the crowd thinks you dissed us. And Chris was like, what are you talking about? I didn't diss y'all. I don't have no beef with the UMCs. Cool Kim said, nah, but when you came on the stage during your freestyle section and said, UMCs think you can freestyle, but you can't, everybody thought you was talking about us. And Chris said, no, I just said UMCs like people in the crowd, not the UMCs. So Cool Kim said, yeah, but the people don't know that. Now, what's funny about that was when Cool Kim first said that, in my mind, I was thinking, nah, he must be exaggerating. Then I remembered that the crowd said, ooh. And then I was thinking, well, maybe some people actually thought Karis Wong was dissing the UMCs. As a matter of fact, a few years later, many years later, I was having a conversation with my dude, my brother, DJ Evil D, 
from Black Moon. And he was telling me that he was in the crowd that night and he remembered the crowd going, ooh, when Karis once said, UMCs. So, anyway, Karis Swan was saying to Cool Kim and Haas G, nah, 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 you got it all wrong. I have no disrespect towards you guys. It's all love. So, Cool Kim was going, you got to go back up on stage and tell the crowd that you wasn't dissing the UMCs. Keep in mind, most of the people had already filed out and people were still filing out. So, Chris was like, Nah, man, I'm not going back up on stage to tell the crowd I wasn't dissing the UMCs. So apparently there was some conversation. I don't remember it clearly, but apparently there was some conversation where Cool Kim asked Chris maybe if he would go on the radio station, the New York City radio station, tomorrow, the next day, or during that week to tell everybody that Karis one was not dissing the UMCs. Now, I don't know if Chris agreed to that or said, yeah, or maybe I'll do it. I don't know what Karis One's response to that was, but I do remember that uh, one of the UMCs kind of mentioned that. After that conversation, the night was over. I do believe we didn't really think that much about it after that. BDP was so busy at the time touring to promote the new Sex and Violence album that had just dropped a couple of months ago. We really didn't even have time to do anything but hit the road. Fast forward to the year of 2006, 14 years later after this initial incident at the BDP show in New York. Now, there's a dope hip hop website called uncut.com, ran by my man Robbie. Shout out to my man Robbie. And on this website in 2006, he had the MC from the UMCs, Cool Kim, as one of the featured writers doing articles for this website. The very first article that this guy, Cool Kim, wrote was called Hip Hop Sucks Because of You, KRS One. So this article caught my attention. I'm like, Hip Hop Sucks Because of KRS One? Let me see what this guy, Cool Kim, is talking about. Apparently, Cool Kim says he was at the infamous PM Dorn incident in New York City back in, uh, I do believe it was either late 1991 or early 1992. And he claims he was the host of the party. Cool Kim goes on to describe what he says was the events that happened that night. He broke down everything that he saw before the PM Dorn incident happened and then he went into the whole PM Dorn incident. He described how he was on the side of the stage when KRS-One and about 15 to 20 big dudes all dressed in black rushed the stage and ran up on PM Dorn. So now I'm reading this and I'm saying that is a complete bold face lie. I continue to read it. Cool Kim claims Karis One took the microphone from Prince B of PM Dawn and started beating him over the head with the microphone several times. And since the mic was on, you could hear the thump, 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 thump coming through the speakers. That is another bold face lie. So I'm reading this like, why is this guy just making up a story? He also said the DJ who would be me, ripped the record that PM Dawn had playing on the turntables and you can hear it go screech through the crowd. That was another lie. Cool Kim also claims that PM Dawn is the only group that Karis One would have the courage to even confront. And he didn't confront any of the other groups like X-Clan. And he claims that Karis One had beef with King's son and when King's son stepped to him, Karis One was hiding. Now, that's another bold face lie. And I'm gonna shout out to my man, King's son. King's son and BDP go back to the Latin Quarters days. And in reality, in 1992, there was a confrontation between King's son and Karis One, and I was there. 
and it didn't go down nothing like how Cool Kim stated. As a matter of fact, in a later video, I'll break that down. So Cool Kim, in summation of his whole article, claims that the reason why there's so much beef and violence in hip hop was because Karis One rushed PM Dawn in 1992. And ever since that, 1992, all the beefs in hip hop are the fault of KRS One for doing this thing to PM Dawn. I'll link the article in the description below so you guys can check it out yourself. Now, after reading that article on uncut.com, I was pissed. Me, Kenny Parker, at that time, had never done any interviews ever in hip hop. I decided to comment in the comment section to Cool Kim and to uncut.com audience my opinion of his article. This is what I said. I am very surprised at this piece written by Cool Kim. Considering we did a show with the UMCs a few months after the PM Dawn incident at the Ritz in New York, and they were acting real cool with us. In fact, I've seen them many times over the years, and I thought it was all love. You never know what people really think of you in reality. As for the actual PM Dawn incident, it didn't happen the way Cool Kim described it at all from my perspective, which was from the DJ booth overlooking the whole crowd since I was the one throwing on KRS's records. Maybe this website will one day allow me to give the real entire story from before, during, and after the incident, which Cool Kim couldn't possibly know. Lastly, considering the people who rolled with KRS at the time of the incident, I'm glad the UMCs didn't decide to step up at that time. After I placed my comment in response to Cool Kim's article in the comments section, Cool Kim followed up with this response. Kenny, please do not confuse disliking. Matter of fact, let me use the term despising something that someone did versus how a person feels about you. I have untold respect for you, Kenny, and on the honest regarding that Ritz performance, we were cool until some other shit took place. And if this is really Kenny, then you would know exactly of what I speak. And then you would also know of the word that was given and broken. That did a lot to us and caused us a lot of problems. When a man's word isn't his bond, that does a lot to moral stock he has with others. And then Cool Kim goes on to leave his contact information and says I should reach out to him if we want to talk further about it. However, I did not reach out to Cool Kim. Instead, Robbie of Uncut.com reached out to me and asked me to do an article describing what really happened with PM Dawn and do a whole interview, which I did and set the record straight from my perspective. Basically, what I said in the article is basically what I said in this PM Dawn breakdown on this channel. So basically, y'all, my summation of the whole thing was Cool Kim had been holding a beef for 14 years based on a misunderstanding that happened at a show. And I don't know if Karis One gave his word that he would go on the radio station and clear up the whole incident. I don't remember that. But Cool Kim was holding on to this grudge and decided 14 years later to write a whole article with a bunch of fallacies because he was still mad at the whole situation that happened years earlier. Let me say two things to you guys out there. One, you never know how a person feels about you. People can act real cool to you and real cool in your face and behind your back, they can have a lot of venom towards you. Always remember that. Everyone who smiles in your face is not exactly your friend. Two, take everything that you hear on social media and on YouTube with a grain of salt. You never know what underlying agendas people have when they speak on certain incidences. Don't even believe everything that I tell you. Fact check for yourself and make up your own mind what you hear people say. Because trust me, Everything that people say on the internet is not exactly true. People have faulty memories and people just have beefs 
and old grudges that they try to get off in other ways. In fact, y'all, let's fast forward to the year of 2008, two years after the Uncut.com article. Karis One had an event in New York City that he hosted with some other MCs. I went there with my homeboy from Channel Live, Hakeem Green. Shout out to my man, Hakeem Green. We were there chilling, and one of the hosts of the event was a guy called NY Oil. He spoke, Karis One spoke, everyone interacted with, with each other, and at the end of the day, I went home. I didn't know till after the event that this guy, New York Oil, was in fact the MC Cool Kim from the UMCs. He looked a little different. This time he was a lot bigger, but it was the same guy. Had I known that New York Oil, NY Oil, was the same guy as Cool Kim from the UMCs, I absolutely would have brought up the fact that this guy had a whole lot to say on the internet. But I didn't even know it was the same guy. I don't know if he saw me or not, but I was there. He never spoke to me, but I saw him, but I didn't know who he was. But trust me, y'all, if I hadn't known that was Cool Kim, I would have brought things to Karis One's attention. A lot of the beefs that you guys see or hear about in hip hop, the way you picture in your mind is not necessarily how it happens in real life. Most of the time, beefs don't be two people with an attitude and when they see each other, they square off and it's a whole brawl. That's not how beefs happen in hip hop. A lot of the times it'd be two guys see each other and they'd be like, yo, what's up? How you doing? We need to connect. We need to do some songs together. Let's hook up. And they exchange numbers. And they're all friendly. And then when they leave behind your back, you hear that they said something or they'll say a subliminal in a record or they'll make a whole diss record even about the meeting that you two guys had. But in face to face, a lot of people be faking and phony. But that's the music business. All right, enough of my rant. Let me quickly shout out Haas G of the UMCs. I've bumped into him a couple of times over the years, and he was really cool. I don't know if he had any beefs or held any grudges, but when the times that I saw him, it was all good. And lastly, just last year in 2023, I saw that Cool Kim of the UMCs actually did another video about the PM Dawn incident. This is over 30 years later. Now, in all honesty, I didn't watch the Cool Kim video. I have no need to watch it. And I don't know what he said. And I don't know if he still has beef or not. But all I can say is, 30 years later, Cool Kim is still speaking on the KRS-1 PM Dawn incident. And I don't even know if it's factual or not, guys. You guys can look for it on YouTube if you'd like. Anyway, y'all, that's my story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.